Right. So this is, again, walking you through the example from the lecture. So we've got a firm that's based in Ireland, makes bicycles in Ireland and in England, sells them in both countries. So P is the price in Ireland, P star is the price in England. So Q star is the quantity that it's sold in England. That can come from foreign direct investment or exports. Q is the amount that's sold in Ireland, which is what gets made in Ireland minus whatever is sent over to England, so minus exports. The cost of production in Ireland is that. The cost of production in England is that. Every unit you ship across borders costs you a buck, and then you got a fixed cost that's that. So first thing we're going to do is see what things look like without uh, just in general. So we've got a profit function for the firm. This is always the first step. Write out your profit function. What is the profit function? Price times quantity minus cost. What's different here is we have two quantities and two locations where we have costs. So it's price in Ireland times the amount sold in Ireland plus the price in England times the amount sold in England minus Irish production cost minus English production cost minus shipping cost minus the fixed cost, which is our proprietary asset. Don't forget, the amount sold in Ireland is equal to what you make there minus what you send to the UK. The amount sold in the UK is what you make there plus what you bring in from Ireland. So we can substitute, oops, son of a, we can substitute these two quantities back into our profit equation and we come up with this big nasty thing down here, but it's not as nasty as it looks. So first case is think about what happens without any foreign direct investment. So profits equals price times quantity plus price times quantity over in the UK. Now what's different here is we have no foreign direct investment. We have no Z minus our production costs. Since there is no foreign direct investment, everything is made in Ireland. Shipping costs, fixed cost. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So again, where do these come from? Marginal revenue is the derivative of the revenue function with respect to the quantity. So 100 minus, because it's quantity squared, the 2 drops down, 100 minus 2 times the quantity. Marginal cost, take the derivative of this thing. So the 2 drops down, 2 times 2y, that's where the 4y comes from. That y has a 1 in the exponent, 1 times 5 times y to the 0 power. Well, that just becomes 5, so it's just a derivative. And again, if you're not cool on derivatives, look elsewhere on YouTube. That'll get you what you need. Now, over in the UK, what do we got? Marginal revenue minus the additional transport cost equals uh, marginal revenue at home. So again, the economics of that is, gee, I could sell it at home and bring in this much money, or I could pay to ship it there and bring in that much money after the additional cost. So what do we have? Marginal revenue overseas is 100 minus X minus the transport cost of 1 equals marginal cost in Ireland. That's always step 2. Step 3 is always just solve the system. You can start with any of the equations you want. I tend to start with this one. So from the marginal revenue in the UK minus transport cost equals marginal revenue back in Ireland. That's what it looks like. And then what I did was I'm just sort of getting rid of that 100, that 100. That's where the first line comes from. Then I don't like negatives, so I'm going to get rid of my negatives, multiply both sides by minus 1. I'm going to bring that minus 2x over to this side. That makes 3x. Then I'm going to take this minus this plus 1 over to this side. That's where the minus 1 comes from. Then I decide divide each side by 3. That's where that last equation comes from. Then you take this and you plug it back into the other equation we've got, which is marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So remember that was 100 minus 2 times y minus x. So I'm just plugging that formula for x in right there, equals marginal cost. Now, what I'm doing from this line to this line is I've got y divided by 3 minus 2y over 3. And that leaves me with just 1y over 3. A minus, a minus makes a plus 1 third. So don't lose your double negatives. Um, that, that'll cause you problems. Now, I hate fractions, so I'm going to multiply each side by 3. That leaves me with this line right here. So 300 minus 2 times y minus y plus 1 is equal to 12y plus 15. Then what I'm going to do is get rid of the parentheses here. So 300 minus 2 times 1, well, that's where the 298 comes from, minus 2y equals 2y plus 15. I'm going to take this 2y over to that side. And I come, that's where the 14y comes from. I'm going to take my 15, subtract that from each side. That leaves me with 283 equals 14y, divide each side by 14, and the amount that I produce in Ireland is equal to 20.2. How much of that do I export? Well, I've got this equation from before. All I do is plug in 20.2 there, and I come up with I export 13.1 of my 20.2 of output over to the UK. 
So now I know exactly what's going on. Now I know how much Y is, I know how much X is, I plug all of that into my profit equation, spend a little time making love in my calculator, and I come up with 174.9. That is profits for a firm that does not do foreign direct investment. What if they do FDI? What's different? What's different is now we have a Z in there. Now we have foreign direct investment. So still, the first step is always write out your profit equation. Second step is always get your three conditions, your, your first order conditions. Again, we have marginal revenue equals marginal cost. What you get from selling it in Ireland is equal to what you get selling it overseas, taking out your transport costs. But now we have something new, which is that you have the marginal revenue in the UK equals marginal cost in the UK because you get to produce in both places. Step two is exactly the same. Step three is the same. Solve the system. Start with whatever one you want. I tend to start with the last one. Marginal revenue in the UK equals marginal cost in the UK. So again, taking derivatives, that's what our equation looks like. Get rid of the parentheses. Take my Z here over to the other side. That's where I get the 5Z. And then take my 100 over to the other side. Or you can think about us taking X to the other side, Z over here. Either way, what we come up with is Z is equal to 100 minus X divided by 5. Or if you don't like fractions, 20 minus X over 5. Then I take that thing and I get rid of my Z in my export equation. So again, what was this? Marginal revenue in the UK minus the transport cost equals marginal revenue back in Ireland. So I've plugged in for my Z, got rid of that thing. Um, again, I don't like fractions, so I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5 to come up with that. Then what I do, I'm collecting this 5x here with that minus x to get that 4x. Over here, what am I doing? I'm getting rid of my parentheses again because I hate parentheses. I'm going to take my 500 here, 500 here, those two guys cancel out, get rid of my parentheses there. So that's how I get to that line. Then I've got 100 and 5, so I'm going to combine those to minus 105. I'm going to take my minus 4x over here on this side, that's where the 14x comes from. So 14x, and then I'm going to take my minus 10y over to this side. 14x equals 10y minus 105. Divide each side by 14. And this is then, again, just like we had before, the relationship between exports and production in Ireland. Now, I can take my X and I can go back to my marginal revenue equals marginal cost back in Ireland. And this is exactly the same thing as what we had before, just we have a different expression for X because now we've got FDI over there. So, again, I'm going to multiply both this through here by 14, multiply both sides by 14 to get rid of my fractions. I come up with that. I'm going to combine my Y's right there. I'm going to combine my 105 and my 2, my 4y and my 2, to get that right there. And then I'm going to collect terms. So I'm going to take my 8y over to this side, that's where I get 64y. Then I'm going to bring my 70 over to this side, combine those three guys together, and I have 64y minus that is equal to 1120. Divide by 64, and the amount of output I produce in Ireland is 17 and a half. Now that I know that, go back to my X equation, plug that in for Y right there. What I come up with, I export 5 units. Now that I know I export 5 units, how much do I make in the UK? 19. Then you plug all of that back into profits, grind it out, and what do you come up with? Profits is equal to 1,000, which is you know part of why I had that weird number there. So I try to aim for nice round numbers so you feel good and confident when you come up with the right answer. So again, that's how you do the horizontal model. It's the same steps every time. Don't let it throw you. It's right out the profit condition. What's the trick there? Keeping track of the story. Which bits go where? Thinking about what output actually gets sold in each country as it depends on production and exports. Your three key equations, which are really just marginal revenue equal marginal cost in your two countries, and then a link between countries. You should bring in the same amount of money after taking out transport costs regardless of where you sell it. And then it's about solving the system. You can start anywhere you want with that. I tend to start with the marginal revenue equal marginal cost in the foreign country, plug that into my export equation, and then plug that into my marginal revenue equals marginal cost at home. Practice it. It's not that hard once you get the feel for it.